Hello everybody, my name's Dokreva and welcome to this new Let's Play of Hearts of Iron 3. Basically, I went to Gamescom and saw some gameplay footage of Hearts of Iron 4 and I'm really excited about that game coming out. It's... Opinions on it are quite divided at the moment. In that some people think it's too much dumbing down. And it's not going to be as epic as, as Hearts of Iron 3. But uh, I still have a good feeling it's the genre of game, World War II, history. All of that combined really makes me want to play it. So to bridge the time until then, we're going to start one more game of Hearts of Iron 3. And we're not going to continue the last one we played. Um, an eight, you can always check out the 89 episode long Let's Play of Germany that we did. But uh, we're still going to take an exciting nation as we know it. Here's the world at... Uh, oh god, I should turn the sound off on that thing at least. Yeah, professionalism right here everybody. Anyway, here's the world in 1936, which is the start we're going to take because I really like this start. It allows you the most freedom and it allows you to basically overpower everyone else because you can play smarter than the AI at some points. Anyway, we are going to pick this nation. Japan is an interesting choice during this period. Japan is definitely an interesting choice to play in um, Hearts of Iron 3, being one of the Axis powers, and actually a lot of things as well. Um, first and foremost, Japan at Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, brought the United States of America into the Second World War, and they, well, President uh, Roosevelt, Franklin, not Teddy, uh, deemed it uh, well, it was a day that lives in infamy, basically. It's still um, very much remembered. And basically, he was forced to declare war on uh, Japan. And the Senate and House, or just one of the two, voted almost unanimously in favor. There was one... Uh, I think it was... I'm actually not sure it was one anti-war uh, senator or representative that actually voted against declaring war not because of being attacked but just because of the principle of not wanting to go to war anyway here's the nation of japan as it sits in 1936 we rule over a lot of islands um the size of these islands do not represent the real size in real life i mean uh, midway island is no way near almost the same size as uh is these islands of uh, Hawaii. I think that's actual Hawaii. And that's uh, Maui, maybe? Or is this... This is at least Honolulu is over here. So, yeah. So, but that's just for the so for the heck of things. Tahiti all the way over there in France. And, oh, that was weird. Oh, that mouse bug is still here. Uh, yeah, so Japan rules over all these islands in the Pacific, rules over Taipei, Taiwan, whatever you want to call it, or the Republic of China, I guess, nowadays. It's a very um, explosive subject, kind of, so let's not get into that, but we rule over it. We also rule over Korea, both united, and it's not... Um, it's partially due to this war and its aftermath that we have the current situation of North and South Korea as well. Um, Korea does have a core, or actually is it a claim? Oh, they both have a claim. So there's North Korea has a claim on the North and South Korea has a claim on the South, basically. And they are, they're called Korea and the People's Republic of Korea. And there's uh, China, nationalist China, Yunnan, Guangxi, Click, Zhangxi, Zibai, Shenma, Xinjiang, and Manchukuo. Basically, China is in the middle of a civil war, has been for a while now, I think. Also, there's communist China right here, with uh, its leader is um, Mao Zedong. You cannot see that right here, but he is uh, leading 
nationalist China. Basically, there is a civil war going on. But in 1937, in July 1937, yeah, you need this. Or sometime after that, there was the Marco Polo Bridge uh, event. Basically, it was a way for Japan to force itself, well, force war on China. And it forced the Chinese to set aside their differences to combat the common enemy of the Jap Japanese intruder at that time. There's that. There are a lot more interesting historic things surrounding World War II and Japan. Of course, during due to the end of the world, the only two uh, nuclear weapons ever to be used in while well, combat, so outside of testing, were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And other than that, Japan wasn't is not a fascist nation, by the way. Politics-wise, the control clique is in charge, which is, if I remember correctly, basically the uh, militaristic wing of um, the nation. You can see that mostly the um, conservative parties are in charge. But this government has no elections because the head of state is Emperor Hirohito. He's a stern imperialist with uh, IC plus 5%, which is pretty good. It's not uh, the best you can have, but it's pretty good nonetheless. So, also Manchukuo is um, sort of China, but it's a different part of China. And it is a, a puppet state of Japan. Basically, we rule over them. Defending them against the Soviets in the north as well. Stuff like that. So this first episode, after I've talked about some history for a few minutes, is just going to be the setup of the game. And the second episode will actually start progressing the game, which will be later today if you're watching this when it comes out. Uh, or should just be available whenever you come across this. So first off, Diplomacy. It is pretty important for Japan to conduct a lot of diplomacy because it has no real natural resources. We get some fuel because we're making it, we get some money, but we have um, only 2.2 oil, ro ro crude oil, every day produced. We have 30 rare materials produced, we have 55 rare, met well, regular metals produced. That's also one of the main reasons for Japan to go to war with the USA because the US oil embargo on Japan became so incredibly tight that Japan felt it was forced and it's just the attack on Pearl Harbor and the actual point that the war started was a surprise but that war was coming was actually quite likely in the West East as well because Japan's actions in China were condemned there's of course their alliance with Germany everything like that so all of that combined but diplomacy wise what we are gonna need is to sell supplies that's pretty important now the advantage of playing as Japan is we might be able to sell uh, no they won't accept anything from us right now probably because they don't they do have money but Okay, decline then. Okay, Soviet Union. We want to offer a trade agreement to sell you. Really, they don't want us. Oh, we do need to go to the left. Okay, then we're going back to France for a second. I don't care giving France some stuff, but they don't want to do that anyway. Probably relations are not the greatest. But yeah, offer trade agreement to the Soviet Union. Probably what you have to do as Japan and Germany when you start off. Can I get this a tiny bit more? Yeah, that's the maximum we can get. So we'll accept this. We'll do the same with the US of A. Offer trade agreement to sell them. No. Oh, that's not the US of A. This is the US of A. So we will sell them supplies to a amount of 19.4 come on one damn it uh, finicky so finicky what is that button oh, yeah let's reset it uh, come on I just need a tight that's going backwards I right, was there it was there for a sec 
Ah, finicky mouse. Jesus, it's not that precise. Or the DPI settings are just too... Fine, we'll take 18.7 then. There you go. We'll accept both of those. Hopefully they will accept our pr proposals pretty soon. We do have more diplomatic stuff available. And what we're going to do finally is... Um, do I really need to align to the faction? Uh, the threat is the biggest issue right now, so we're probably close enough. So we don't need to actually align ourselves. No reason to um, do anything. We are going to align towards Germany regardless. I mean, territorial pride, limited war, yes, allies. Oh, that actually gives stuff. Alliance-wide guarantees, consumer goods during wartime and peacetime. Commentary. Free resource gifts, yes. Espionage bonus. Supply consumption, minus 33%. That's actually not bad. And territorial pride. Make sure units stronger on home ground. Anyway, um, we'll look at production last. And technology second to last. First off, let's see what do we have in ministers. We cannot change these two, which is a shame, but... Um, ruling iron-fisted brute, create compromise or intel tendency to drift... I like the susceptibility to the, to the axis for now. I mean, we could go for ruling party support, but threat impact would be higher. That means people would be uh, much uh, more likely to declare war. Um, currently, we are have a laissez-faire capitalist. It gives us more consumer goods during war and during peace, which uh, makes us need less of these every time. So, um, let's see. We need a total of 17% of our IC into consumer goods, our 151 regular brigades, and mobilized reserve brigades. We require that 17 and a half be put into consumer goods when at peace. So that would be 20% if we um, if we were to remove that one, I think, the guy, and change to supplies. But we also kind of need the supplies to um, sell basically that's that's our source of money and we're gonna need money so I'm gonna switch you over to the military entrepreneur Minister of Security we have threat impact minus 10% we could also get ruling party support and increased partisan efficiency partisans is a big problem as Japan so at least once you do get into China so I'm gonna leave that for now threat impact is just gives us a uh, longer time well political Intel or industrial Intel it's for intelligence and not that important. Both guys of the chief of staffs give the same stuff. Infantry or artillery decay. I'm fine with the infantry militia right now. Aircraft carrier practical or capital ship. I like the aircraft carrier idea more. As well as uh, naval aviation doctrine. So those are fine. We cannot currently change laws while we can get more efficient laws. Especially the industry ones is going to be good for us at the beginning because the IC efficiency for production minus 15% is just ridiculously bad for trying to go to war. But we need a little bit more money before we can do that. So that's that. We're probably, maybe we'll actually play one day before actually ending this episode. Um, active spies. I need to get my own nation filled up as soon as possible. I'll keep one in counter espionage. Most important, we need to raise our national unity. It's quite important that we do. It actually is going down right now because of a s fractured government. And a fractured government means that the parties that are in charge have qualify for certain cabinet positions. And we don't. We have like one blue guy in charge, which is the Seiyuku Socialist Party, I think. Yeah. Basic. That's about it. So. Not having the amount of ministers uh, relative to the amount of cabinet positions kind of um, stops that. So while it is also good to get your support ruling party up, I think that right now this is uh, more important. Here you see Germany, of course. And if we look at the amount of spies and nations, we see three and less. So first off, we're going to put them in our own country. Technology wise, we are going to we don't need anything in diplomacy because we're not actually pulling or pushing anything with factions just yet We could it put it down to zero officers right now. We are at a hundred percent 
how efficient is it to educate them right now go back to this one i think that's inscription laws yeah um a three-year draft cannot be done right now because we are not united enough so for now that's fine uh so we're not gonna recruit a lot of officers right now simply for the fact that we are not efficient enough in it so we're gonna put it there and just to get things done we're gonna start with um a couple of days of just spies just pushing them out uh, same thing we did with Germany if I recall correctly and then we're gonna switch over to probably 20 or between 15 and 20 research points it depends on how many spies we want to keep active uh, but I think we I want a very um, active support uh, supply I mean espionage force this game try to do a little bit more spying and getting stuff fixed that way I mean, theaters is not really that important. We can take a look at the theaters uh, somehow. I think, yeah, here's the theater in China, basically. Here's the theater in Japan with all the freaking islands everywhere. We see garrisons in several places. We might need to reinforce some of them at one point, but not yet. I mean, we're not at war, and the first war we're going to fight will be China taking more land here which is supposed is supposed to help the um, Japanese co-prosperity sphere that we're trying to create yeah, that's basically it and then there are we have some aircraft I think if we look at strategic effects we have we got 18 aircraft but we have 97 ships we want to expand our fleet and we want to modernize it at a pretty heavy heavy pace so will we we will be building a lot of navy stuff and uh, yeah there are some other stuff we can gain uh, we will probably at one point gain the Taiwan Strait huh. so that would be a good one for us have the country flag Japan seizes the coast interesting so yeah, stuff that gets happened when you get all of these. Gulf of Tonkin, which is down here. That's the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, famous for the Tonkin incident, of course, during the Vietnam War. That escalated the conflict during President Johnson's tenure in the White House. Anyway, um, yeah, technology. I will look at least at 15. We might add a few more after that. Things we definitely want to get. Um, yeah, we cannot just yet, but it is important for us to at one point get jungle warfare equipment. It definitely is. But we do have a lot of manpower, which is actually remembered that we had less manpower. The problem is, of course, the cost with everything. So we will be upgrading a lot of these. We won't be getting very many tanks. We might get some light tanks. But the terrain is uh, actually quite important. We will be fighting a lot in jungle here, of course. China is also quite bad in terrain. It has... This is all the flatlands in China. And there are still lots of hills as well. Lots more mountains, forests as well. If we want to go to India, there's also this entire region to go through. So tanks are just not going to be very strong at all. So we're not going to focus on tanks. What we are going to focus on is definitely artillery and probably anti-aircraft as well. Anti-tank, same thing. The enemy won't have that many strong tanks anyway. Um, I think the same problem is armored cars won't be that impressive either. So infantry, definitely going to do the split thing again. And what we're going to add militia stuff as well. Two and then two of the other, which will build our um, theory levels, which will aid our future research. Because if you build them all at once, re uh, the theory will start decaying faster than you can research it. So this is usually a faster way. Very important for us is improving our ships. Now, we don't need to improve our anti-aircraft armament. Wow, we actually have 1940 level submarine, including sonar and stuff that's impressive so we're gonna start with both destroyer and 
Light Cruiser, main armament and engine, gives us to 10. Uh, actually, I'm going to start with the armor on the destroyer because it's for, it's behind. No, I'm going to do all three then. Because it's behind. Um, heavy Cruiser can use some anti-aircraft. I mean, I just said it's not as important, but it's at a lower level. Which is bad. Same thing with the anti and with the carrier stuff and battle cruisers, we're more about the actual battleships. Battle cruisers are just faster but l less strong. We can actually check up on that. So flotilla, battleship versus battle cruiser. Battleship has um, less organization. Convoy attack if battle cruiser is higher. Sea attack if the battle cruiser is lower. Air attack is higher. Shore bombardment is higher for the battleship, stuff like that. Um, sea defense is higher for the battle cruiser, but is that partially? No, that's not even tech though. Interesting. Um, yeah, super heavy battleship is not really that impressive. Range is higher on the battleship. Firing distance is higher. Speed is higher on the battle cruiser. So we might actually look at some battle cruisers as well then, and lower manpower cost for them as well. And build time. And they're not that much worse. They just don't... Hmm, they just hit a lot worse. You know what? We are going to research some of it then. Um, but yeah, the main ship armament is for both. So we should might as well start those as well. And we'll do the um, battlecruiser engine first. Sounds good to me. Actually, let's stop. not do the anti-carrier the anti-aircraft carrier stuff yet bombers uh, we are quite at the good level we have all the basic ones done air launch torpedo will be really strong for us as well but other than that we are fine basic four engine aircraft we we might need we could use some um, drops later on but I definitely want to get basic small fuel tank and single engine airframe because it will allow us to get a lot, uh, some better aircraft, and these are pretty cheap stuff to get. Industry-wise, um, education, while it's okay, we don't have that big of a base leadership, but it's still 5% at that point. Already have a mechanical computing machine. Wow, Germany really starts behind. Allow radar installations to work as listening stations, which allows us to do radar, but we already can do radar, which is a bit odd. Um, heavy AA rocket tests. Oh, that gives us the site to build. Yeah, that's true. Um, allows construction of infrastructure. I kind of want that. And even though it's very inefficient, I kind of want that. Because our infrastructure situation is terrible. And getting stuff up there would be decent. Also, industrial production gives us 19. I will put down one more tech, which will go into the... Doctrines. Infantry doctrines we can leave for a little bit. I think the ones we are going for are the Grand Battle Plan stuff. Rather than the Combined Arms Warfare or Superior Firepower or Spearhead Doctrine. Um, because they give us the organization for the supporting units that we're going to use. The artillery the and the anti-air. Special Forces. We will be having Mountain Troops, Marines, Paratroopers, Engineers. We will also... We'll increase infantry as well. So we're mostly going to be doing infantry rather than militia anyway. Militia is basically for later. Um, operational level organization is freaking important regardless of which uh, doctrine you pick. So we're still going to do that one. And I actually am going to cancel the militia stuff for now. We have the manpower so infantry shouldn't be that bad. Um, so I want to go to 20 so I want to... Naval doctrines are actually pretty good. Sort the organization. And yeah, we have a lot of carrier stuff already. Basing, submarine crew, trade interdiction. So let's look at air then. Tactical air. Let's do naval air targeting and naval strike tactics, which makes our aircraft on the sea stronger, which is what we want. Now that our technology is set ready for when we have the spies we want, which is like a week of spies, we're going to look at the production now. Upgrades. Currently need a lot of upgrades. 
We're not going to upgrade just yet. We're going to upgrade when we need it at the start of 1937 to prepare for the war with China. Once we take China, then we can prepare for the grander World War II situation will be in later. So for now, upgrades are going to zero. Reinforcement is going to trickle down to 0.5, which is a good moment. If you're doing this yourself, 0.5 is where you want it when you're not at war. Any attrition that will trickle down, any um, wartime, what's the word? The word is here somewhere uh, during conscription law. Uh, peacetime manpower rotation, people going home because they are, don't have to be on active duty, etc. That allows it, that counters that basically. Um, supplies, we want a hefty amount of supplies though, but consumer goods, we are low right now. But if have changed the government a little bit so even though for now we can put it at 0 0.05 above which usually deviates anything we need supplies I'm gonna drop down to we're selling like what 20 or trying to sell about 20 each um, we need how many we need 15.19 so I want to go to about 200 supplies actually generated on a daily basis which is actually around 20 that is 25 but we did get the supply guys so it can be lower at one point there is going to be a plus 25 percent plus 20 percent which leaves us 81.5 to work on production they currently want four ta light armor and one technical bomber in each of our theaters but yeah if we look at theaters, that's a little bit problematic. Now, things we have to get going is a long series of escorts. And probably two parallel, because we're going to need escorts. Every build, it takes so long to build. Oh no, that's the total build. We start the production, it will be done. So 20 will be done in August, and it gets... Doesn't it... It does not actually get any better than that, so we kind of have to. Uh, same thing with convoys. I know it will take... Yeah, we're building a total of 1,300 escorts. But they're going to be extremely useful in the long run. Same will do for uh, the convoys for now. Just two simultaneous. We can always drop both one of them. Currently building almost 2,000 escorts. But this is just a long line. It will keep building for a while, but it will get get us 12 IC stuck for a long time as well. Industry capacity, there are only two nations that effectively can handle industrial capacity building in the beginning, which are Germany, because they start with no army and a lot of a lot of IC already, and the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Versatility? No, adaptability probably to the situation and how you want to play and actually make it worthwhile to build IC. The other one is the USA, which actually is a very usual strategy of just being, if you're playing the USA, is just building like only industry until 1938 at least. And then you can just start steamrolling your, your industry even faster. It's insane. But yeah, so we're not going to build these and... Anti-aircraft guns can be useful in places, but I don't think uh, they do give us um, they give us artillery practical, which is actually not bad. Um, we'll do a series of ten times two, no three. We'll build thirty of them. It takes one uh, almost uh, two years. It takes ten, I see, I know, but it's not a priority. But we'll keep it there anyway. Um, Division-wise, yeah, I would have to check what we have in divisions, really. We're probably going to build a lot of divisions, and we're not going to build very big ones. We're also going to reform most of what we already have. Border Guard garrisons. There's some cavalry in between here. Reorganization is going to be a fun, not fun project. Which is just... Uh, what the hell? There are three. Ca there are a lot. We actually have quite a little bit of cavalry. Just uh, funny. Also, there are more infantry here. So, uh, four, eight, and there was sixteen with the other two groups over there. 
I'm just trying to get a hold of how many infantry I have. That's also garrisons in Korea. Here are some garrisons. There are three more here, which is important. Yeah, the, it's, uh, the exact amount of stuff we're going to have to build will actually have to be um, a later point. Imperial Guards is the special unit of the Japanese. They have some artillery as well. We're going to want to build actually quite a few artillery pieces to start off with as attachments basically so if we go to artillery um i can if i'm just gonna build them as reserves and mobilize when we need them i see cost and manpower cost is halved while the time of construction stays the same i'm gonna build a series of four because that's about the time we'll be mobilizing actually we will be mobilizing at this point so no, actually, just before. And with practical, it should go faster at one point as well. And we'll build at least 40. We'll build 40 artillery attachments. It's just IC cost of 22, which uh, should be fine for now. Um, infantry is fine at this moment, but of course, we're going to have to build some ships as well. We are currently building a destroyer. It's going to be done soon, but we want to build more. And the reason is, of course, it costs IC. We need to get some stuff going. Um, these are both the same. I will build a light cruiser first. To, this is just to build up some practical. We don't need the ships for the initial attack on China. We will need the ships to fight in the Pacific once we join World War II. And getting started on... Uh, some practical stuff by building, say, uh, wow, 16 months versus 341, but double the practical here. The Soryu class. Um, not gonna add CAGs for now. We can always build CAGs later. Yeah, I do want one of these that brings us down to 14 production left over. So we have a carrier. I kind of also will to build a battle cruiser. It's 15 months for that one. You can see how much bigger our naval uh, practical stuff is already present compared to Germany because ships are so much faster to build at the beginning. That's a good thing. Finally, we will want to get some aircraft. Now, carrier groups are probably going to be the main focus of our, na of our, our uh, air fleet simply because we will have a lot of aircraft carriers, hopefully. And 152 days. These are cheaper to build but take longer. And the practical is about the same. So, close air support is also light aircraft tactical. Hmm. I also want to build naval bombers for sure. So, I'm going to build one naval bomber and one close air support. No, I'm just going to build a carrier group. They'll get upgraded anyway. Problem is, of course, the fact that our IC were now over the limit. But this uh, will change a little bit in between. These won't really. But yeah, consumer goods, we're probably going to need a little bit more in there. But this does mean that our um, aircraft guns, anti-aircraft, is going down. Now, with when we change our industry policy, we will be uh, getting a better efficient production going on which makes everything build even faster than it currently is which is also really good the faster we build the more practical we build up and everything but we don't want to because we have such a limited ic we don't want to spend our um practical on or ic on practical that we won't need in the long run so for now all the important ships submarines aren't yet important yet for us they will be eventually but it's another another six i see used so a carrier a battle cruiser uh, a light cruiser and a destroyer is fine for now we already are building a destroyer so that practical is going up once that is constructed anyway same with uh, light aircraft and medium aircraft going on here and of course the artillery is in the beginning important and of actually you know what i'm gonna cancel 10 of these and instead add some more infantry as reserves uh, build a serial of 
five as well as two parallel so 10 more of these groups manpower cost is almost is 50,000 um, men each point is 1,000 men basically and this is the, as reserves so mobilizing that would cost double and it takes 16 months it's only 7.26 I see so we're gonna send them up there to Tokyo Ho Haishidan and the Sendai Ho Haishidan also, I'm going to drop these to the bottom because we need at least one to go on here, but the other ones are not that important. And as a story, I just want to get that finished first. Yeah, I think that's uh, for now what we want to build at least. Um, strategic resources only, dockyard facilities in Tokyo, which is pretty good for us at least. Anyway, that's going to be the first introductory episode to Japan. If you want to leave a comment, please do so below. If you want to like the video, Please do so as well. It will uh, let other people find it a lot easier. And of course, make sure to subscribe if you want to actually follow the Let's Play. Because it's going to be grand. It's going to be strategy. And it's going to be gaming. Because this is kind of a grand strategy game. Um, in episode 2, I will have um, actually checked up on forces. Rearranged them already. Or at least um, put them on move commands. We're not gonna unpause. I'm not gonna unpause until that moment. So, don't worry. You will see me rearranging everything once it's all being built and actually positioned. But for now, I'm gonna do a tally of what we have in the in between episodes. But until then, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.